special factoring techniques. In this section we're going to look at some special types of factoring. First of all we will look at perfect square trinomials and on the side I have put a list of our perfect squares that we generated. So in the second column all of those numbers are perfect squares. For this problem actually I would just do it like a normal trinomial because it's an easy one with a one in the front. But it is what is called a perfect square trinomial. The first term is a perfect square and if the last term is a perfect square it probably is a perfect square trinomial. Just guess the square roots and then check. So we'll go ahead and do our parentheses like normal. This says do like signs both minus. We'll take the square roots. For 9 it will be 3 and 3 and then you just have to make sure that the middle works. Minus 3x gives us minus 6x and this works. Uh, quite often you will see these written because the factors are just alike with just one parenthesis and an exponent of 2. I wouldn't bother to go to that form. I would keep it here because it's easy to check. But if you do see it this way you want to recognize it. This next problem is a good example to think of perfect square trinomial. Uh, we look at it, there is no GCF and it has this number in the front so we really don't want to go to trial and error. Often you will spot these perfect squares. It has to begin and end with a perfect square to be a perfect square trinomial. This one does so most of the time perfect square trinomial will work. It is worth going to that choice before we go to trial and error. So we'll do like signs both plus and square root of 4 will be 2 and an x. Square root of 9 will be 3. You still need to check and make sure the middle works out. This will be 6x on the outside plus 6x, 12x, and it works. If it did not work, then go to trial and error, but most of the time they will work when they're set up this way. For this problem, I would tend to rewrite it in descending order first. So I'm going to put my 20x squared term first. Minus 20x stays in the middle and my plus 5 at the end. Um, this problem has a GCF. You should always look for that first. So we can take out a 5 and that leaves 4x squared minus 4x plus 1. From there we have to look at this trinomial to see if it will do more. Anytime it has something to the second power um, you, in a parenthesis you have to see if it will do more. Right? The 5 is done. Don't forget it. We will need it with the answer. This one looks like a good candidate for perfect square trinomial. We have a square at the front and we have a square at the end. So let's guess that. We'll do like signs both minus. For 4 our square root is 2 and we also need the square root of x squared which is x. 1 and 1. We'll double check. Minus 2x and minus 2x is minus 4x and that works. Remember you're just going to the line right above. So don't forget to put this 5 with your answer. The first thing to try on this problem is to factor out a GCF. It just has way too much stuff in it. Uh, there's not anything you can do with the numbers and we can't take a y but we can take an x squared. So that's going to leave us 4y squared plus 12y plus 9. Right, and then we'll need the x squared with the answer. This one is a good candidate for a perfect square trinomial. We have a square at the beginning, we have a square at the end. So we'll guess the square roots um, and first we'll do our signs. Like signs both plus. So 2y, 2y. For 9 we'll do 3 and 3 and then we'll check. On the outside we have 6y inside plus 6y gives us 12y. That's correct middle term so we're good. Don't forget to bring this x squared down with your answer. I'm going to add one extra example here that was not in your uh, template. For this problem it's pretty obvious here that's a square at the front and that's a square. I would certainly go to perfect square trinomial to try first. Like signs both minus this time. 
try a 7x, 7x, and 5 and 5, and then check. So minus 35x, minus 35x, plus minus 70x, and that works. Next we'll look at some more uh, problems with perfect squares. Uh, these problems are called difference of squares. They have two terms. They are actually missing a middle term. They go from x squared to a constant. So they're missing the x term, or they might be x fourth to a constant and missing that middle term. Right. So they have to be two terms. They have to be minus, and they have to be perfect squares. Uh, so this one looks like a good candidate. We do use two sets of parentheses. It really is a special case of a trinomial where the middle term has canceled out. They will be different signs to multiply to get a negative. Right? And then guess your square roots for 49, 7, and 7. And we'll check. Minus 7x plus 7x. And these are going to wipe out. That is what you want to happen because you don't have a middle term. This is such a nice pattern that most of the time I don't even bother to check. For this problem, it is two terms. It's minus 64. That's a perfect square. So difference of squares is going to work do our parentheses. It's always different signs. That's how you get the middle to cancel. 64 is 8 times 8. For this problem, it is two terms. It's minus, um, looks like perfect squares. The only difference, this one just has a number and a variable, but that's fine as long as they're squares. So we'll do our parentheses, always different signs. Square root of 4 is 2, and we'll need an x there. For 49, 7 times 7. So it works. For this problem, we have two terms. It's minus. 9 is a perfect square. 25 is a perfect square. So we are going with difference of squares. Different signs. Square root of 9 is 3. Also the x. And for 25, 5 times 5. For our next problem, it is two terms. What you have to watch out for here, it is plus. Um, so you would have to use like signs, and like signs would not make a middle cancel out. You would have to use like to multiply to get a positive. Our only other choice on a problem like this would be to do a GCF. Um, there is no GCF, so our answer is this one is prime. I'm going to work this problem for you two ways. Uh, the best way is always to look for a GCF first. There is a GCF in this problem. There is a 4. So we could take that out. It leaves x squared minus 9. And if we have a parentheses with something to the second power, we have to see if it will keep going. This is going to keep going. Now it is the difference of squares. So we can do x plus 3, x minus 3, and we have our 4 with our answer. That is the best way to work this problem. But if you've been working squares a while, and you see this problem, you might look at it and say, oh, that's difference of squares, which it is. Those are both squares. You could do your square roots. Uh, the trouble is this problem is not finished. This first set of parentheses has a GCF, so now you have to take it out. So you take out a 2. It leaves x plus 3. The other one also has a GCF. You have to take it out. Take a 2, it leaves x minus 3. Now don't get this confused with grouping. These are all just multiplied here. So we'll put the two 2's together. 2 times 2 is 4. And you eventually get to the same answer. You can just get a little tangled in the middle. So this is not the best way, but you can get there. It's always best to try a GCF first. Right for this problem. Uh, we have two terms, but first of all, we definitely are going to try GCF. We don't like this minus at the front, so we're going to take out a negative GCF. Use your calculator. Uh, the 12 actually goes into 108, so we can take out a negative 12 for a GCF, and that will leave y squared minus 9, and then this is a difference of squares. So y plus 3, y minus 3. And we'll bring down our negative 12. 
For this problem, you're also going to go with a GCF first. Of course, try the 27, but it doesn't go into 192, so you have to go lower than 27. Um, 9 doesn't work. It's actually going to be a 3. So just use your calculator there. So that leaves us 9x squared minus uh, 64. And this is a difference of squares. Our 3 is going to come down. For 9, we'll do 3x and 3x. Always different signs. 64, 8 times 8. For this problem, we might be a little concerned about the 4. It is two terms. It's minus 81 is a perfect square. What we have to do is just see if we can get the square root of x to the 4th. And so you make a guess. And you might guess x squared. So you just try it. x squared times x squared, does that give us x to the 4th? It does, so x squared is the square root. So this is going to work as difference of squares. We'll just have to use x squared here instead of x. Plus and minus, and we can use 9 times 9. Now, you have to be careful when you start out with a higher power like that, and make sure that these parentheses don't keep going. This one is finished because it has a plus, so it's going on down to the answer. It will not go into difference of squares. This one, though, will bring it break down into difference of squares. It has minus, and these are both perfect squares. So we go down from x squared to x to the first. And this whole piece is our answer. For our next problem, um, it doesn't look like difference of squares. Uh, at the beginning, what we're going to try is grouping because it's four terms. So let's see how this one goes and why it is in this section. So in our first group, we have a common factor of x squared. To get back there, we're missing x plus 4. In the next one, we'll just take out a minus 1. And that will also leave x plus 4. You pull that minus out of both terms to the outside. With grouping, you hope you get a common binomial, which we did, so we can take that out. It is now our GCF. And then to get back to the line above, we're missing the x squared minus 1. Now, if you get a parenthesis that still has something to the second power or higher, you have to see if it will keep going. This time we do have that. So our x squared minus 1 might do more. It will. It is a difference of squares. So x plus 1, x minus 1 from difference of squares. Make sure you bring this x plus 4 down with your answer. We have one more problem that is four terms. So four terms, we're going to try grouping. So group this way. In our first group, we have a GCF of x squared. To get back there, it leaves us x plus 9. In the second set of parentheses, we will take out a negative 1. We start with negative, that's your clue. That will leave us x plus 9 because you pull that negative to the outside. You can double check here, negative x, negative 9. What we did is correct. You have a common binomial, so we'll take it out, x plus 9. To get back to our line above, we're missing x squared minus 1. The x squared, there's nothing else we can do. It's going to come down to the answer. But the x squared minus 1 gives us a difference of squares. So it will go down from x squared to x to the first. Plus and minus, square root of 1 is 1.